Crash Course Live is presented by Smash It Demolition Derby, who host Bash for Cash, Blizzard Bash, and Capital City Carnage. Online at smashitderby.com. And Stirring Dirt Racing, host of May Mania's team show at the Golden Spike Arena in Ogden, Utah. Online at stirringdirtracing.com. Reckless Abandoned Derby Apparel and Derby Inc. Magazine. This is the Crash Course Demolition Derby Podcast, recorded live at the FingerLakes1.com studios in downtown Seneca Falls, New York. And now your host, Chris Marquardt. Good afternoon, good evening, and welcome to the Crash Course Demolition Derby Podcast. Excited to have everybody along for the ride this evening on a rocky start to episode number 279. Hopefully we've got Nick on the line here. Nick, can you hear me? Perfect. So we'll get to Nick here in just a second just to fill everybody in on what happened. We had a uh, what appeared to be a catastrophic failure to the power supply to the studio. And uh, upon further inspection and playing a little bit of the game of Clue, it turned out it was the lockbox behind the painting in the hallway. So that was fun. We learned a little bit about the construction of the building, made some new friends um, who, are, who are very good at, at figuring out electrical problems except for the one that was plaguing our studio. Everybody uh, really helped out a lot. Our guests have been very understanding about that. And uh, without any further ado, we'll let you know who is in the studio with us. We've got Lee Sager and Marty Sager joining us in studio. Those guys picked up a win in the two-man extreme class. And then we've got uh, Nick Hardner who's going to be joining us on uh, Nick Harden. Let me try that again. Uh, who picked up a win in the mini meltdown overall with spinning wheels here a couple weeks ago. So we're going to jump into that stuff. We've got some stuff about uh, one of the local officials here who passed away over the course of the weekend. We've got Brewerton's Derby results with King Smash and Crasham. Uh, gentleman who got in some law trouble. I don't know if you caught that. We'll, we'll talk about that, that guy who decided to use his um, demolition derby car to prove a point to a neighbor. We'll jump into a little bit of that over in Livingston County, and then some comments on <laughs> some comments on uh, Gary Montgomery. So let me get this set real quick, and I got to be honest. I'm glad that everything turned back on. That's that's <laughs> that's uh, we were we we had an episode one night where the computer hard drive fried as we were about to go live. So that was a much, much worse situation than what we had now. This was just a matter of flipping a couple switches. That when we lost a bunch of content and stuff, it was, it was a little bit challenging. But, but nonetheless, um, Nick joining us on the line. Nick, man, how are you? Doing great, guys. Uh, appreciate you coming on and, and hanging out with us for a little while. And again, congratulations on the win as well. Um, tell me a little bit about how that all played out for you, Nick, over at Mini Meltdown. Where's this win rank? I mean, the, the camaraderie, we'll, we'll jump into that here in just a second, but where's this win rank in terms of the, the hierarchy of wins for, um, for you overall? Who else do you run with? Or do you want to keep that a secret so nobody can figure out who you're teaming with next time you gang up on them? <laughs> Did you go to Brewers on Friday? No, no. no. Uh, I actually took the weekend. I, I try not to hit every weekend. I got a little guy who's three years old, and I got some camping obligations and that little stuff. So we make sure we put time into the family as well as into the sport. Um, so you're from up in, in Plattsburgh, and you said that this is one of the biggest wins that you can come across in, in the Northeast. Again, apologize to everybody who's tuning in trying to catch up. Um, 
with us for the six o'clock start time. Uh, for you, this this ranks as then, given what you're saying, this ranks as the biggest win of your derby career and and yeah, running yeah, running sure. running select shows. I mean, what else does that mean? I mean, you're going against guys who run upwards of twelve, fifteen, some of them even twenty times a year. You know, anytime you're running with those guys and making it anywhere, it's just a privilege to be on the same track. I mean, those same guys. Uh, to be honest with you, the guy that took second place looked at me and says, hey, just so you know, if you load your bumper down another inch, it, it'll fold in a different direction. I mean, that's the kind of people that are in the sport, and those are the guys you want to run with. As far as the smaller shows that don't really have a case set of rules and they kind of make it up as they go, they're a little bit more frustrating, but we, we avoid those as a rule, and we like to get together with the good stuff. A little, still a little bit unsettled here, is trying to make sure everything is still running the way that it's supposed to be. We've got the couple of folks at the table here with us tonight as well. Uh, Marty Sager joining us here. You got to do which side of the duties? Wheel. You got to drive. Yep. You got to, to direct the, the bullet and, yeah. and uh, Lee, you got to fire it, right? That's right. So the, on the topic of the camaraderie side of things over at Mini Meltdown, you got any thoughts on that? But it was awesome. I mean, I've never had a problem with anything with spinning wheels. It's always, always been fun and it's always been you know, always together in the pits and stuff. It's, I mean, if you've seen any of the videos that we were high fiving and you know, thumbs up in the, what was that man's? What was that boy's name? Uh, the good speed. Yeah, good speed. It got second. Well, we put him in the corner and was half tracking him, and he was thumbs up in us, and we were thumbs up in him, and it was it was a good time. Uh, Tommy Goodspeed picking up a win over the weekend at Merchant Speedway. He won the uh, compact side of things for King Smash and Crash from Demolition Derbies at the Burton Speedway. Tommy Goodspeed winning that second place and Mad Dog Award going to Arthur Hamm. On the uh, the big car side of things, Brad Hodges coming away with the win over Mike Beers and uh, Brian Parker. Got Mad Dog. Again, that was over Friday at the Burton Speedway. So we got that squared away. Nice segue. I jumped, right, jumped right there to, to, hit, to hit Tommy. Appreciate, that. Appreciate the I setup. Think it was I think it was Andrew that yeah. was in the car. Though. Oh, it was Andrew. It's still yeah. good speed, though. Um, so, in, in terms of your run, you guys have, have sort of figured this whole compact extreme class thing out. Well, we did. I mean, like I said, this is our third time running together. And the only thing that we ever figure out is if he wants me to go nose this way or back this way. And that's, that's the only thing that's a. You know, if he puts it in reverse, does he want me to spin it around for the nose, or does he want me to drive straight back down? But other than that, it's you know, if I go, if he puts it forward, I know I got to hit the you know whatever's in front of me. <laughs> 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 now, now he's uh, Lee. You're working the pedals. Do you try and, and and bounce off that wide open element so that he can steer this thing? Yeah, into I try the... to I try to give him enough warning before I really get into it, but. He's pretty good about thinking where we're going next. So, so you're high fiving everybody on track except for each other. Except for each other, we're, yeah. we're <laughs> <laughs> You guys won the first extreme class. Yeah, that first that New happened York. in New York, yep. right? Yeah. Uh, was that a surprise to you? I mean, it was a surprise Very, to yes. a lot of us with running the lumen against. Yes, the it was side. a surprise. That we did four motors that night. <laughs> yeah, I forgot about that. Changed four motors, no sleep, drove five hours, and. At first, I actually nuts. couldn't even finish watching the whole San, the whole San Filippo show because I couldn't yeah, he's stay awake. I went to sleep in the truck <laughs> out in the pits. You're a lot older than everybody else. Yeah, so that's for different. sure. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, in terms of inspection and everything for you, Nick, how did how did that go in terms of getting through um, and and getting to a point where you could go out and compete? I mean, anybody in the derby world knows about that notorious cut sheet. Right. <laughs> it's kind of a passage of honor, but I've never met a group of officials that, you know, when they're done looking through your car and saying, hey, you got to cut this and cut this, and, and when you come back through, they're like, hey, dude, be careful out there, have a great time, good luck, smack you on the back and send you out. They're, they're not that angry bunch of officials who got a big chip on their shoulder. They're just trying to put together a good show. I mean, it's, it's kind of hard to come across that in Derby Land. It's, it was great. We as a group, we get together, we build completely by the rules cars, but I mean, there's always something that's kind of great. They had a two-inch drop bar, and ours was on the back of our, our fuel protector, so we had to cut that off. I mean, that was our only thing, and we had to wear on our back bumper, and uh, we're happy to go through and just make sure that everybody's running the same and having a good time. Those guys are great. 
Was it as simple for you guys? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. We were. This is our third one, so we didn't even have a cut. <clears throat> yeah, we didn't we have were, anything to cut. We were behind a lot on time on this one, too, so. Yeah. It was a pretty basic build. Um, what's that feel like for you guys? I mean, it's a little bit of a different situation you're out there by yourself because you know you've got other elements you're, that, that you can sort of battle through. Um, if things go wrong in the heat, you can come back, fix it, whatever. Sometimes you can even add some things in the pits that you were supposed to cut earlier. You guys are in a little bit of a different spot. You're, you're, you're running out there in a two-man car. You, you're a one and done. If something goes wrong early, then your you're afternoon's done. over yes, with. So right. and do you feel good getting through tech without having to cut anything? Uh, we did, especially on that day, because, first of all, he had his boys that weekend, <clears throat> and we wanted to you know, let him go to the, the stands and watch the derby, where I took, um, I think I took Lori through the, Pittsburgh. I never even drove the car to yeah. driving it on the track. She was she was running the gas in the brake, and I would we drove through the, uh, the inspection, and it was like, you know, they were all they all look at the normal things for you know W body stuff, and there was nothing there. There was no added nothing, and we didn't even put six inch plates on the frame. Where yeah, we were every plate put six inch plates on the frame. We didn't even put any plates on the frame. So they were they were almost like. You didn't do this, <laughs> right? You know, you know, so it was like we just skated right through, went in and parked, wired it down to where we had to wire the, like he said, we had to wire the bumpers on. He wanted extra wires on each bumper, and we wired the bumper on, and we all went to the stands. We watched the derby that day. That's Very <laughs> enjoying <laughs> that whole one and done, you know, one heat thing. It was it was great to watch a whole derby instead of being in the pits, changing tires, you know. Beaten sheet metal. It was sure does make for a long day when they do the, the heats and features thing. Now you got to taste mm -hmm. that one and done. It's, it's awful oh, nice it's, not yeah. have to pack any torches yeah, yeah. and that stuff. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and you guys got some derbies coming up at the end of next month next and then July, some time yeah. off and getting ready for the fall, right? Yeah. Well, pretty much August is pretty slam packed. So we're going to try to relax for July and I think we got five or six pre run cars at the house. We're going to try to go to county fairs and just finish up what we got so we can build fresh that was another big thing with the two-man car we, we were having to rip other cars apart that we didn't want to so we right. we stuck to the basics as close as we could and just said we're going to have fun and hang out and watch a derby and you're going to uh you're going to be running Steuben county at bath yeah we're do, county yeah in shimon county that's stony roberts is, but you know it's whatever it's <laughs> hometown <laughs> right <laughs> we you can't miss from, your hometown we matter. are from elmira <laughs> so Ronald McDonald could be running that thing. You're not going to miss your hometown. That's right. That's for sure. That's, that's what some of these promoters just don't understand about the summer is there is no amount of money or facilities or any of that to get people to not go run in front of their hometown. Right. You yep. can't put standalone shows in the summer. It's a hundred. It just yep. doesn't work. Yep. What about you, Nick? What's your plan for the summer? Uh, you know, we got Clinton County coming up. we got Essex County and Franklin County. We like get the local fairs, keep the local kids screaming and having a good time. We always like to try and put on a good show for the crowd at those. So we're going to build a couple of cars, do some quick builds, and go out, do some smashing, and get together with the guys for a weekend and just have a good time. You know, we'll be looking for a big show hopefully in the fall. If we can find one that lines up with everybody, we'll be up. Well, there's a bunch of them that are that are cropping up that you got to choose from, and then obviously there's the um, – uh, the San Filippo Smash that comes up at the end of the year as well, which is always a good option. And then on top of that, uh, the Ellisons do that show yep. over at Paradise Speedway, so there's a good option as well. And that's easy enough to get to right off the throughway. Um, up where you live, are you doing anything at um, Plattsburgh Airborne Speedway? You know, last year they had a good one up there. We actually ended up winning it. I won that one. Right. And, uh, that, was, that was a good one. That was put on by Butch and Tommy. Had a team of medals with the help of Airborne Speedway. But as of right now, I haven't heard much. I know mm -hmm. Kurt Seymour is one of our local promoters. He's, he's looking at trying to put together something for the fall, so we're hoping that pans out too. Sure. But as of right now, no real hard plans on it, but we're, we're always going to keep a car in the back ready to go. Canandaigua uh, Land of Legends Raceway is going to have a derby coming up this week. They're running on Wednesday night. Um, they're going to be running in conjunction with some monster truck activities that they've got out there, and they're going to have quad races as well, so another Speedway Derby coming up. You know, for a long time, it seemed like the Speedways sort of shunned the Demolition Derby. There was a real dry spell there. Yeah, um, 99, 2000, some of that in there, they were all over the place, and then it tapered off, but with uh, uh, the Eva Destruction back in like 13 or so, 
things started to turn the corner back the other way, and we're starting to see more and more of the speedways picking up derbies. The Ellisons have had a bunch of them. Um, Brian Sippel had a bunch of them at Canandaigua as well prior to that. Um, and, and it's good to see John King's made some real good inroads with Fulton Brewerton, at least in our area. And, and as, as Nick said, up up north at, uh, it, it was Airborne, I think, then, right? Or was it Airborne, Plas- yeah. Plattsburgh International? Yeah, had, had 12 different names in the last 12 years. <laughs> We've been running a couple of the Enduros over at Adirondack Speedway. We're really starting to kick some things back up. Then you run an yeah, Enduro? Yeah, the Slush yeah, Crush, yeah. Slush Crush. When was that? Yeah, yeah, we were in Slush Crush. No, yeah, when? Yeah, December, I believe. Yeah. yeah, it was cold. Yeah. That was up north. Yeah, I'll tell you, those guys put on a good show. They let the crowd in for free for that event just to get some people in the seats. And yeah. Yeah. it all went to a charity, if I'm right. And cool. what a, what a great place to go run a car. Awesome, that's uh, that's good to hear. Um, over at Land of Legends, over the weekend, they uh, inducted Gary Montgomery into um, their Hall of Fame, their their Wall of Fame. Unveiled that, and his brother Dick and his uh, his wife and his son Scott, they were all there to uh, to participate in that. Gary Montgomery was credited with coming up with the name AJ Slideways for dirt modified racing fans and uh came up with the nickname uh the hurricane for steve Payne, uh darren dan the stock car man for danny johnson and stuff and, and he passed away uh after a battle with cancer and he was one of the first guys that gave me an opportunity to break in any of the promoting and the marketing stuff um first doing a little bit of writing stuff and really embraced it over at canada and then he took over black rock speedway and i was the um uh public relations manager underneath him so it was good to see him get enshrined and that um it was good to see and so that'll be there for uh, a good long time and that's the second one that they did this year and i think they got a few more planned at land of legends obviously uh wednesday night won't be one of them because i don't think they got any space on their wall for demolition derby stars <laughs> yet but who knows if, if we get some some more inroads into the speedway scene maybe maybe it'll come around and and, and work out um so we you're on a better show what's that we put on a better show. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody I don't this, know. They were wrecking last time. <laughs> they were wrecking last time. <laughs> Everybody in this room is biased on that opinion. <laughs> let's, just, let's just clarify that real quick. Uh, but, uh, but Nick, man, congratulations on the win there. Uh, we're trying to gain a little bit of our, of our time back after our power delay. Is there anybody that you wanted to make mention of that we might have missed early on? Yeah, Matt Gilmore really put it together, putting the car together with me. He's in there building all the time is when I can't. Uh, big thanks goes out to another guy that was actually running Adam Stickle. He came over and he was wrenching on our car in the middle time there, putting things together. And without him, we wouldn't have half the car we had going back into the future. And John Downey came down with us, and also uh, Alex Martin. Uh, he's one of the big guys' sons up here that runs, and he actually came with us for the whole trip, and he was a wrench man for us. So that was our crew down there for that show, and they did an excellent job. Uh, real quick, just to go back, you were talking about going out with a car that, that, that maybe wouldn't have had as much if it wasn't for the effort in the pits. I mean, was that did that prove to be the difference? I mean, was it that close in your eyes at the end? Yeah. Our last hit, that, well, we like we all go to work Monday through Friday for our money, right? So on the weekend, if it comes down between a first-place check and a second-place check, we're going to tell the guy in front of us to back it up. We're going to go end-to-end if they'll do it, and we just want that crowd to be screaming. I mean, that's, that's what we do. We're out to have a great time. Yeah, we and we've <laughs> gotten a couple of features in the past year. And, you know, this event here, we tried to get the guy across from us to back it up a little bit. We might have been a little harsh on how we were trying to do that. But he still let us get a couple good hits in. And that last hit actually shut our car down. So it was right wow. down to that last wire. We're running Camrys. I mean, so if there's strut issues and God knows whatever else folds up on them things. So when it comes to the middle time, when you get a chance to put them back together, you're going to have some guys that can match. Sure. Yeah. We went down with a good group. I usually ask, you know, what, it's, what was your perspective? You know, was there any point in the feature where you thought that it was yours? But it sounds like it wasn't uh, It wasn't really on the radar even. You just wanted to entertain the fans, and whatever happened after that last sequence happened. Yeah, we just go out there and just try and do the same thing we do all the time. We know it was a long derby, so we had to preserve a little bit of car for the end if we could make it there. You know, we made hits that counted and tried to avoid the ones that didn't count. I mean, uh, going into the... The feature there, uh, at the very end of the heat, we had a guy come blasting through from the full track, and he ended up missing the hit in the wall. He got the mad dog and made it in the future, which was absolutely awesome, but that hit would have taken anybody out. I mean, he, he was cruising. He shut his, he put his frame right down in the dirt on that hit. I don't know if you guys got to see it, but it was a great hit. Cooper. Yeah. Awesome. Gary Cooper. 
Yeah. <laughs> Gary's, Gary's a fun guy to watch. <laughs> he sure is a fun guy to watch. Um, I was very happy to be in reverse watching that go by. <laughs> Nick Harden coming away with the win in the Jeffy's Fab Farm Mini Meltdown. The compact division with spinning wheels over there in Morris uh, two weeks ago. Congratulations on the win, man. We do appreciate you coming on and making some time for us. And, again, apologize for the delays with uh, some of the technical troubles here. All right. Thanks a lot, boys. Thanks a lot. We'll see you later. There goes, there goes a couple thoughts from Nick. How about you guys? I mean, was there any point in the feature where – you looked around and thought, man, we uh, we definitely have this in the bag, or man, we could definitely be in trouble. Uh, for me, I wasn't controlling the engine, but when it was down to the three of us down in the one corner, and we nose the nose against that W body, <clears throat> and it felt to me like it was softer than we were, and and then uh, Goodspeed came around and hit him in the wheel, and we backed straight off of him, and he didn't move as good as. I thought it was just going to be down to me and the good speed, and I was like, we could have it here. But that was the only point, point in my the whole heat that I had. It was like, because it was it was tough. Yeah, it was tough. Well, I don't think any of those are going to be easy. There's that that one and done element where everybody's going to be running a little bit harder, everything's yeah. a little bit more wide yep. open, and then you've got the communication issue just to, just from the right to the left side of the car back oh, and this, forth. <laughs> this was one of our worst runs with communication. We had a tough time in the beginning getting on the right track, and yeah, because I could figure out what he wanted. I, I kept spinning it around in 360 this and go back down the track because he kept pointing backwards. So I thought he wanted to stay down on this end, and it was. He kept saying, "No, straight back, straight back." <laughs> I mean, is it a case where you put you put the deer radios in so that you can hear each other better in the ear? So versus the noise, or is it is it enough inside the car where you can lean over and, and get to each it's other? It, it's conference? like you're talking right here, to be honest. When you're yeah. in there, it's yeah, you can you can focus on each other pretty well if you needed to. Interesting. And he any any time that he would like move his arm, you know, like this or like this, I would you know obviously know that he's seen something that I didn't or vice versa because he's got a lot more freedom to move around because I'm looking for shots coming, you know, left and right and normal. But he can move back around because he doesn't have the steering wheel. So this is this is two out of three, right? Yeah. Yeah. Where's this one compared to the first one in terms of ease, in terms of familiarity, in terms of any of that stuff? Uh, ease was definitely there because, like I said, we've already built two um, compacts. First two were for versus V8s. Which I still think it's crazy, compact. but I mean that that answers that question about can a can a W body hang with a V8? So you guys were just so much more mobile than the big cars were. Yeah. yeah, and it was nice that day they had soaked the track because of all the injuries, and that yeah, that just played in show. our favor. And that was at that point before the Derby. I said they they soaked that track. We're gonna have a good advantage of moving. And that, that was probably my most comfortable run was the first one over the other two. We had no issues. Everything ran flawless. I mean, that was definitely a nice, comfortable run, the first one, compared to these last two. And um, you didn't put the plates on, on this one. Everything held up okay for you? Yeah. And didn't do bumper, weird? bumper went flat right up against the core support. Mm -hmm. Core support went right against the front header. <laughs> <laughs> Smashed the front header into the... Burnt the plug wires. It started running like crap at the end, but they got us there. You know, just just thinking out loud. A ski cradle, gray area cradle, yeah. would help a lot. Yeah, <laughs> wouldn't wouldn't work there though. I, <laughs> <laughs> you talk to Jeremy and tell him to get us to let us run cradles, and I am one hundred percent sure that that won't happen. Right. Yeah. <laughs> we we enjoy the stock bro. That, was, that car was built in three days. Um, right. Yeah. I mean, we we do enjoy them, and, and it wasn't as picky as the one earlier this year, right? You didn't have to build three to get one. Yeah. <laughs> no, literally, I pulled everything out of my team car from. That was one that I had stripped and decided that yeah, I wasn't going to run that. That, one. Was, that didn't meet the standard for a solo run. <laughs> I took everything, shifter, cage, everything, right out of my um, my team car, car, my road rage car, and put it right into this car, and just. Literally just moved all the pedals and the shifter and everything over on the passenger side. Where do you run the sh Where do you run the shifter? He I runs run it right, right on the door. The bar. door yeah. On the door. Yeah. So I mean, in terms of in terms of door shots, when they come in, you know, you're not allowed to hit the the, the driver's door. You're does, not does supposed it happen to. on the Does it happen on the right they side? They say still? they say to avoid them too, and everybody's pretty good. I mean, there's been a couple times where luckily I've seen them coming and got out of the way, or sure. they had high cars like in the V8s. So there's a lot of times that. The high cars were coming down us, and they were at the top of our roofs. And 
there were some sketchy times there. I've thought about moving the shifter, but I'm comfortable with it. So right. I, I mean, I mean, it is on you know it's normal. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. I yeah. understand that it's normal, but you've also got your arm is now inside some of those exactly. openings. Yeah. When that sheet metal collapses, your hands yeah potentially yeah. going to get pinched. He yeah. puts it on the inside of the bar. Yeah, I weld yeah. it to the inside of the bar, so, so it does I have mean, a does four have inch. That. Space, space, some room. And you could always wear mechanics gloves. Those are tough. Yeah. You know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they don't make you bleed when you smash them. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we, we talked a little bit about some of the county fair stuff. I know we're going to get into a little bit of this um, uh, when, when Brian comes back to us. We're going to do a little bit of a summer schedule shift uh, once we figure out our summer soccer schedule for Allen and then um, – Brian, who's working in the day on Mondays, also has his coaching duties to take care of, as he has for the last several summers. Uh, so we're going to probably be shifting things for Tuesday for a month or six weeks thereabouts. Um, but we're going to try and keep on our schedule for the summer all the same, because right now as things map out, summer is around the first, second week of December. We should be hitting episode number 300. I don't like to think about December. We just got rid of the cold weather. We had <laughs> summer for a week now. Um, two of the maple trees over at school have already started to show red leaves on the ends which is really frustrating but yeah. you know who knows um all the same uh seneca county is mourning the loss of ralph walborn senior um i remember ralph when from when a kid when i was a kid going to seneca county um and, and watching him flag he was he was a crucial part of the the demolition derby world um in and around seneca county uh, the waterloo derbies that are here um, brian's won under his checkered flag a couple times and uh he passed away over the weekend, uh, Ralph Walborn Jr. was very active with um, the derbies as well, so uh, the father and son got to work together. Ralph Sr. also was very active with um, uh, Bill Trout's race cars. He was he was uh, uh, a standard there at Seneca County with his red shirt, his white suspenders, his white pants, um, and and he's going to be sorely missed. A uh, big part of the X Society as well, and, and a big champion for Demolition Derby, trying to make sure that it stayed uh, at a level where it was stock, where it was equal and, and a lot of the big money didn't come in and upset the status uh, at the same time he was uh, willing to take the chances they did the pros versus joe's event uh, he was involved in the conversation that brought the trucks in and also was involved uh, in the discussions that allowed the modified class finally to come in and have a couple of those dynamite shows that we saw here in seneca county so unfortunately uh, it is with sadness that we say goodbye to ralph warborn senior um, and again we'll be talking a little bit more about him when when brian comes into the studio um, next time he's out tonight i believe he's doing uh family lifting or there's the chance that he got ordered uh he does work as a corrections officer and when they say hey you're not leaving he doesn't get to leave <laughs> and, and it's not like he can just go say hey uh let me text somebody real quick it's it's you're not yeah. leaving yeah and and that's that so uh to ralph Walborn senior um we promised a little there's a story that's going around facebook and i don't know if you guys had a chance to see it yet but uh it was shared a, a number of different times and uh I, I can't wait to get into this. This is a report from, um, from this morning from the Livingston County Sheriff's Office from the town of Springwater. Sheriff Thomas, I'm reading right off of their, their Facebook page, Sheriff Thomas J. Doherty reports the arrest of a Springwater, New York man on felony criminal mischief charges. After an investigation by the Sheriff's Office, June 20th, the Sheriff's deputies responded to an address on East Avenue in the town of Springwater to investigate the intentional damage of property. It is alleged that 34-year-old Stanley Payne Jr. became upset that a vehicle was parked in front of his house and that the vehicle was partially on his lawn. Payne then drove his demolition derby car into the side of the vehicle that was parked in front of his house, causing significant damage to the parked vehicle. Payne was arrested and charged with felony criminal mischief in the third degree. Payne was turned over to central booking deputies at the Livingston County Jail for processing and prearrangement. The district attorney's office was contacted in regards to... Uh, Bail due to the felony level of the charge, it was recommended that Payne be held five thousand cash bail or ten thousand dollar bond. Um, yes, it's stupid. Yes, it's irresponsible, <laughs> but that's funny stuff. <laughs> 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 For all of you guys that have been hassled about having too many junk cars around your property and all this other stuff that have always wanted to do this, <laughs> our guy <laughs> he uh, took it upon himself to. To do it and has um, I didn't reach out to try and get a hold of Stanley Payne um, but I imagine that would be a heck of a conversation uh, <laughs> I imagine he wouldn't be allowed to comment on it in any way because it is an ongoing investigation he's going to be in uh, he's going to be in a world of trouble 
you know, because when you figure about all the unauthorized operation, uh, no title, no inspection, no marker yeah. lights, intentional damage, failure to keep right away, following too close, all the other <laughs> things that are going to be coming with this. But, but for everybody who's always wanted to have revenge on their on their uh, uh, their neighbors for harassing them about demolition derby cars and things along that nature, catch a little bit of revenge. You can now live vicariously through <laughs> thirty-four year old Stanley Payne in Springwater. Um, maybe it's not right to laugh about. It. I'm glad nobody was hurt. Um, I sent that to some of the folks that we work on the Derby live stream productions with, and, and they got a bit of a chuckle out of that as well. You ever, you ever consider that? That ever crossed your mind as, as a potential outcome to solve a, a nuisance neighbor? <laughs> no. You ever want to, secretly deep down? I don't ever have them done any more than when they're pulling on the trailer, so yeah. that doesn't do me any good. <laughs> the only thing we've ever had a complaint about is we loaded for North Lawrence one day at 3, three in the, in the morning. morning. And we didn't winch them on. We <laughs> yeah. drove them on open mm -hmm. headers at three in the morning. Right. We middle didn't get complaints for that in the middle of town. Yeah. So <laughs> they didn't like that too much. So um, you've never had any issues with that then? That's that's good. The noise complaints. I mean, that's that's always yeah. interesting. Uh, what about Tracy? Tracy ever? Tracy seems like he might be interested in running a couple of his neighbors over. <laughs> he doesn't have any good. Well, yeah, he does, he's, he's got good neighbors the for the neighbor, most part. <laughs> yeah, the other one's a big field, <laughs> and he builds five, six cars at a time. Right yeah, in the driveway. It's, <laughs> it's not a quiet neighborhood over there. Thankfully, one of the neighbors is a, is a pretty good size. Field. Right. But uh, so continuing to keep on our our rapid pace of things, we're going to try and, and track down. Randy Leno coming away with the win in Sydney, Montana. Again, congratulations to him on picking up that win. 65 years old when he parked it in Victory Lane here. Um, so we'll be getting him on the line. We were talking a little bit with Bryce earlier today, trying to line things up for Randy. Hey, Randy, it's Chris. Can I put you in? So we got Randy right there. Randy, how are you? Good. A little sore today, but yeah, <laughs> uh, the age kind of makes you a little sore. It's not as easy as it used to be. <laughs> um, what kind of build was that set up for out there? It's kind of a, a limited weld type thing. Um, you couldn't change body mounts, um, but you could weld your bumpers on and weld your doors solid if you wanted to have a good cage. Um, it was all, all my kind of derby. I mean, I'm kind of from the old school where you didn't do a lot of welding, but right. this is about right. You've you, you've you've come along and, and certainly embraced that at different intervals and, and built some of those heavier cars. But as you said, this is this is a little bit closer to what your wheelhouse is. Uh, you know, is this a is this a case where the the uh, the, the old dog taught all the new dogs new tricks, or, or what happened out there? Take me through that derby. Well, I don't know. The, the old dog just finally got lucky enough to ah. win one. <laughs> I've been trying and trying to get a big one, and, and it just hasn't happened. I get close, and that's as far as I get. But finally, uh, finally, it happened. This win, uh, win paid fifteen thousand dollars. That's not a bad payday. No, that's uh, I, I can handle that. Yeah, <laughs> it'll buy a lot of cars now. It sure will. That's probably where it's going to go too, is just because they're getting so darn hard to find. I'm I'm a wagon person all the mm -hmm. way, and they're getting pretty hard to find. But this was you had a box Ford for this one, didn't you? No, no, a '73 Chevy wagon. Oh, was it? I I didn't look at the picture close. I'll be honest. I just I saw you on top of that. I saw you on top of the the car, and and out there, I just sort of made the jump that it was '80s and newer. Um, yeah, no, you couldn't. Uh, you probably couldn't tell it was a wagon that was there anyway. By the time I got done, we sedagged it after the heat, right? And then it just rolled up perfect into a ball back there and worked just great. So fifteen thousand dollars—that'll buy you like two good wagons in a shell, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, I hope I can get a few more than that out of it, but uh, I know they're damn expensive. Yeah. This one here was a lucky one. I only paid a thousand dollars for it, and it was pure luck how I came upon it. I was at a derby in South Dakota, and I was the only wagon there. And this cattle rancher come up to me and he said, "I got one of them behind the barn. You interested in it?" I said, "Yeah." <laughs> <laughs> we went 22 miles on a single gravel road to find his place. 
He was out on the sticks that far. Nobody would have ever seen this car in their entire life. And and you just stumbled upon it by accident. Yep, stumbled on it by accident, and it was a darn nice car. Was it? You said it was inside a barn or it was behind a barn? Up behind the barn. So it was outside no, all the. Derbyed once a long time ago. Yeah. And he just never got back to Derby, and he got too busy, and he had this wagon, and he just left it sit there, and and I just happened to come along at the right time. So, I mean, everything really aligned pretty well, all things considered, in terms of lucking into a $1,000 uh, $1, vehicle, turning around and, and coming home with $15,000 in, in, in the payday. It's not too bad of a weekend. Pretty good profit as, as far as, uh, you couldn't do that to work it. <laughs> no, no, but when you factor everything else in with Demolition Derby, you know, if you go back to the beginning of your career, you had to win, what, 15, 18 times in order to make 15000 Oh, geez, yeah, it was, it, $500 was big money back then. <laughs> When I first started. Much different world now. Oh, um, totally different. The, the derby world has changed so much in the last 10 years that, you know, it's just crazy. For the better? I guess. Yeah? Yeah, it it, uh, it, it makes it a little more interesting, but it is more work. You know, mm-hmm. when we first started, hell, we could start and we could make two, three cars in a weekend, but now it takes a month or two to build one, but... It's more work, but it, it, uh, sometimes you can get two of them, maybe. Right. I mean, just in the time that you've been in a car, Lee, how much has it changed? That's why I went to Comfax. When yeah. I started, <laughs> everything started changing. I was like, I can't keep up. <laughs> right. And then here we are doing the same exact thing in Comfax 10 years later. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So. Evolution's moving up. I mean, big time. Changed a little? A lot. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, the, I'm the same way he was. We used to build three cars in a weekend. And and those days are long gone. since gone. Yeah, gone. Even with the even with the bone stock luminous, can you get three out in a weekend? No. Not not the way we do, no. Mm-hmm. Absolutely not. <laughs> do you guys end up having a lot of time sunk into wiring harnesses and stuff, right? Not we oh, never we never days. messed with yeah. wiring. I mean that's why we went to the carb because we we didn't first off we're not knowledgeable enough with to understand what all of it did and why we needed it and that's why we went to the car because we we understood those and we could take that car apart and put it back together and we didn't have to worry that it wasn't going to run for security or this or that or we didn't have any of those derby day problems with the carbs but the inconsistency pushed us away from that and now uh, Randy's got them harnesses so we don't have to understand them they're uh, the thing play. does itself it's definitely plug and play yeah and it's three wires into the car yeah right? I mean it's you definitely. Know? It's what we we not. wanted to come into the compacts. It's yeah. finally here. Tony Brellinger does a lot of those too. He's gotten yeah. into that into that yep. game, the, and, and it's it's really changed things around for those guys. All yeah, those, I, I can all, imagine that whole compact game has really changed up significantly. Uh, Randy, in terms of the feature, you know, you've you've been in this spot a, a thousand different times, and you always end up, you know, you don't win as many as you lose. What was going through your mind as as it whittled down? You got down to three, you got down to two. Yeah, it, it, when I got down that close, I thought, man, I might get lucky yet. Right. And uh, <laughs> got down to just me and the other guy. Then the general really started running. I said, this guy ain't coming out of that hole. And I just kept following him until he was done. Sure. Did Bryce make the trip with you, too? What's that? Did Bryce make the trip with you, too? Oh, yeah. He was there also. He just had a little bad luck. Got pushed under berm the first time. And then he was uh, went in the consolation. He was the last one out. Yeah. That's one spot that's short. Tough luck, but well, what? without him and the family, I wouldn't be able to do it. They, they do all the Bryce does all the building, and uh, the rest of them help us support it and help along and go along and pit and so it's a family thing. Does Bryce, uh, as much as Bryce is into it, and as much as he he juggles on the building, uh, does that help keep you in it? Does that help keep you young and and yeah. and driven to win? Right. Um, like I said, without him, I, I'd probably be done already. Right. But, uh, yeah, it just keeps you, keeps you going, keeps you young. So is there is there an end in sight at this point? Or are we going to see you out there 85 years old, 20 years from now, still wrecking those leftover wagons? Oh, 85, that, that's a long way, man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know. I think, you know. I'd like to say another five years, and I think I'm probably gonna, the old body's going to say it's enough. Sure. Yeah, I mean, especially with the the stuff that, you know, limited weld here in New York versus limited weld in Wisconsin, Minnesota, Montana, the Dakotas. It's a, it's a much, much different 
Is definition it? of limited weld, you know. Um, so the, the the bouncing around of the body, I can I can see where that can sort of take its toll. How many years have you been driving now? What's that? How many years have you been driving now? Forty four. Wow. <laughs> or nineteen seventy five. <laughs> And back then, it was, you know, just kind of fun. Everybody get together, drink beer, and, and put a car out there. But um, about 15 years later, then it got pretty serious. I did probably 10 to 15 a year mm -hmm. and did that for about 10 to 12 years. And then I kind of slowed down again. I'm back to about five a year right. or so, somewhere in there. Are, are, are we looking at from 1975 to now, 44 years, are we looking at... At, at wagons the whole time, or did you move in and out of different different preferences? Majority of the time, it was always a wagon. <laughs> I probably, I, I know I've wrecked 150 of them. <laughs> so how many of those wagons, 1975, 76, up until maybe the mid 80s when you said things got serious, did you have one run on those wagons and just say like, ah, onto the next and scrap it? Yep, front ends were clean as a whistle, threw them away. <laughs> just to have the bumpers. Back when you get them for fifty dollars, or somebody give it to you, and you just take the motor out and give it back to them, or right. You know, they were so cheap, it was pitiful. Right. And now, I mean, uh, if I knew that, I could, I should have saved them all back then, and uh, guy could have been rich. If you just saved the front bumpers, yeah, just off the bumper, of all yeah. those wagons that you'd scrap, you'd be rich. Oh, that. Yeah, I kicked myself in the butt many times for throwing all that stuff away. <laughs> Time Machine would change De Demolition Derby in a hurry, wouldn't it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> every, car would be, every, every car would be leaving the factory with factory gussets. Everything would be re-engineered. It would be a completely different world, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> Fortunately, though, you were one of the guys to get one of those wagon trees. You just plant, buried one in your backyard, now it sprouts wagons every spring, and you can, you can just carry on like this. Yeah, we have a, we have a few shaved. <laughs> What's a few? I mean, it and always fascinates me. look for more. It always fascinates me. Some of the guys that say it's a few, it's like four or five, and some of the guys it's like, yeah, we got like twenty five. <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I think we're in that area. <laughs> With a few, we were down to about four for a while, and then we had to get on a buying spree, and finally got it back up again. I don't remember when I talked to you, but I seem to remember that conversation. We talked about how you were running out, and, and you didn't know what you were going to do. But good to see that every uh, you had a bumper crop one year, and, and everything picked up. <laughs> yep. yep, we just. Uh, uh, right now, we ain't got many online, I can tell you that. There's where we're trying to get a hold of, they just keep, want to keep them, you know, and you're never going to find them in a salvage yard anymore. No. It's just about every derby guy's got them all snatched up. I mean, if you do find it in the salvage yard, you're still going to need another one to make it so that it's usable. Yeah. I have one that I have fixed up and drive around as a driver. Right. Painted it up like uh, red with flames with my number on it and... That one will always stay that way. Right. That's cool. I do like the sounds of that. That's neat. There's been a couple of people that have done that. Um, mm -hmm. Man, I'm blanking now. One of the guys that runs out in Utah, he's got one that okay. that, that, that was all cleaned up, and, and I can't remember who's got it. Uh, and it wasn't, it wasn't, it's not like Johnny or, or, or Gumby. But man, I can't I, think of it. But yeah. Yeah, we bought a few cars from Gumby. Yeah, I bet. <laughs> I bet. Yeah. He doesn't want to sell anymore, though. <laughs> no, because he's, he's running out. He's, he's low. I think he's down to like 70 or so. Yeah. 70. I think we bought uh, six or seven from him one time when he was weak. <laughs> Can you imagine going down and just bringing him seven Chevy wagons? It's a no, brand new truck. I, again, but <laughs> I don't know. I don't think I'll find that many in one place anymore. No, I, don't, I, th I think those days are gone. I, yeah. If you weren't running Chevy wagons, what were you running in that time frame? You know, especially in the early early days. Uh, the very, pretty much the very first wagon I ran was a '65 and '66. I ran those for about three or four years, and they seemed to win back then. But man, they're nothing now. Right. The old coil springs in the back they don't they don't take anything. No. <laughs> so, that's that's gone by the wayside. That's for sure. You know, it, it, yeah. it's funny to to watch the way that the sport evolves. I mean, the compact side of things, it, it's the same way. For you know, a couple of years ago, mm -hmm. it was the Corsica. Everybody wanted to get the, their hands on a Corsica. Now nobody even gives a Corsica a second look. Everybody's looking. For I'll them. take the thirty ones out of them. <laughs> 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 My first one was with the Corsica. Yeah, yeah, Luminous, uh, Camrys, yeah, and uh, the Avalons, all that. All Avalon. that stuff. They're making a catch out. 
Yeah, little by little, those are those are starting to gain their momentum back as well. You said you're doing about five a year now. Have you run? At, did you run it all up to this point this year at, at home? Uh, no, not at home. I went to uh, King of the Ring in Nebraska mm-hmm. before this one, right? And then this one, and then I'm gonna do two at home here. Are you doing anything in the fall? Uh, nope, nope, not this year. No. Maybe next year we'll think about something like that. That'd be cool. There's a there's a bunch of shows that are cropping up. Um, Rick Harrington messaged me about a show that's coming up in September. They got something going on up that way. In yeah, I think my son Bryce is gonna go to that. I think. Oh, okay. I, I, yep. I can't remember. I think that's September sixth, somewhere around there, somewhere in that Sounds time. Familiar. Yep. And then uh, and then of course Blizzard Bash is, is the one that everybody goes to. Do you guys you guys been out to that right? We I have. Gonna we're, go we're, we're gonna this go. Year. This I was year? there a couple times. <laughs> I remember seeing you there. Back another time. I, I think that'd be a good idea. Yeah. Might so, have to try it one more time before I hang right. it up. <laughs> you got you got plenty of wagons and plenty of years to pick from. Yeah. <laughs> the the weld class in terms of the wagons. That'd be the yeah, the limited weld class. Yeah, the, the limited weld for, for Randy, but on the weld side of things. The limited weld they probably could do it too, but I don't they've they've only got the, the one and done unless he runs in the team side of things. The weld cars like Chad Markley, the way they get the back end to just fold around those rails and they wire yeah, that thing up and the steering stickers they just start knocking knocking steering out of everybody. It is yeah. it's fascinating to watch. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, Chad and I when I first met him uh, back on the T N N show and I had won the last chance to get into the TNN, and he was right there with me, and that's the first time I met him, and been good friends ever since. That's cool. Uh, Brian, when I was talking to Brian earlier today, uh, putting the show together, he said that he remembered he remembered seeing Randy on the TNN derbies. <laughs> so that was that was kind of cool. He was very very excited to have a, a celebrity on the show. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What was the combination that was in that? Was that a home-built motor? Was that something that you bought? No, it was a bald one. Yeah. Well, he, he built good motors. Uh, I got one of them, and I got a Gator motor mm-hmm. that I really like. And Gator motor. Some of the two <laughs> made ones. Sure. Well, that's, uh, is there anybody else that you wanted to make mention of? No, not pretty much. Just my family. They, without them, I wouldn't be able to do it. Well, you got a good group around you, that's for sure, and uh, I'm glad that they are helping keep you young. I was I was thrilled to get the news that you had picked up the win this weekend. It was very cool uh, to learn about that. Uh, who's the promoter out there? Do they do a lot of shows? I, I, it was a, this event was a little bit under the radar, but fifteen thousand dollars that certainly certainly should have had more yeah. attention. He's, he's a he's a guy that owns uh, an oil field out there. Um, Caleb is all I know. I don't know his last name, but it's enough. Um, he run a hell of a nice show. Yeah. Um, the guy was really nice. He, he brought us payloaders. He brought us skid loaders, and he said, you "Just use them when you want." Wow. I mean, I, I couldn't believe it. it. Without that, the hell, I couldn't have made it so dagging. You know, it made sure. he made it real easy. And the guy was really a nice guy. I plan on going back next year. Looked like the nose on your wagon had pushed back quite a ways. Was that affecting anything? I still drove it off the track. Yeah. Um, that happened in the last three hits. Otherwise, it was fairly straight until the last three hits. Well, that was when you were piling, piling second place into the corner, right? Yeah. Trying yep. to keep him pinned in. Putting the kill on. <laughs> well, if you're gonna if you're gonna junk yourself, it might better be while you win, I suppose, right. huh? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I knew he wasn't gonna come out of there. I, I was. I got the front corner bent up so far his steering was gone, and yeah. I could see that. And he was hot, so we just decided we're gonna ruin ourselves on him and make sure. Did you lose any water at all? No, I never lost any. That's cool. <laughs> no, it, 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 the motor Can't ran really make it off the line. Awesome. Yeah. What'd you say? Never steamed. <laughs> Lee, you were saying? Oh, we, I can't even make it off the line without blowing a radiator. Every time. <laughs> right. I feel like I blow them in the pit. <laughs> <laughs> we ripped the, the top four cores off our radiator. <laughs> Had a nine wire down to... I can never keep a radiator. Floor. That's one trick I can... Yeah. Lee told me that sometimes in the pits you like to stick a radiator in your, or excuse me, like to stick a screwdriver. I blew that joke. I just wrote it right there. <laughs> sometimes, take two. Sometimes you like to stick a, ra- a screwdriver in your radiator just to be proactive. Right. Yeah, it's yeah. cool. It's 
Yeah, he's got to see steam to drive hard. See, when yeah, well, yeah, I don't, I don't drive hard until I see it's starting to junk. <laughs> you got to get him into a panic mode. Huh? That's right. Yeah. You got to get steam on his glasses so he can't see right. Right. <laughs> awesome. Well, Randy, man, congratulations on the win. Uh, usually, I ask. Uh, um, what you're going to do with the money, but we've already pretty well established that this is all going to be invested in more more wagons. Um, a couple of state auctions are... Or one way or another. Yeah, right. <laughs> that, uh, that'd buy a really nice new Baldwin, too, wouldn't it? Oh, yeah, I don't know. This one works so damn good, I, I don't want to get rid of it. I mean, it, I, I, it's got about eight runs on it. I should do something, but it's, yeah, it's just running so good, I can't leave her alone. I didn't say you were going to sell this one. you got to buy another <laughs> one to pull with it. <laughs> yeah. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> I think the cars come first. Got to have the car to put the motor in, so. I get that. It's, you're older and wiser than I am. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely older. <laughs> Randy, man, I appreciate you coming on the show. It's always good to talk to you. Uh, so happy that you won this one. Congratulations. Thank you. We'll talk to you soon, man. You bet. Yeah, See bye. you later. Well, a couple of thoughts from Randy Leno coming away with the win there. It's uh Awesome dude. He has run a lot of derbies. And, I mean, you hear those stories from the guys that have been in it for a long time. Man, if uh, if only we could go back and, and get back what we were scrapping. You know, Brian sure. got stories from when he was running derbies from um, from the Snyder crew. Mm-hmm. Some folks that you guys are familiar with. Yeah. That if the car didn't run right when they bought it, they just drove it to the scrapyard. I remember like, Danny gave me my first car. It was straight as an arrow. Look, of little curl on the rear of the car was beautiful. <laughs> And just and said, "Hey, go run it." <laughs> it's like not even. It's yeah. not even worth changing the spark plugs in them when it's a fifty dollar car. I mean, can you imagine just to have those back? Not yeah, even the ones no that kidding. Were one run cars, the ones that never even got. I Can't remember even. back when I was a kid, and Danny and Dougie used to go down south and come back with a tractor trailer load full of them, <laughs> unload them into the front driveway. I was like, <laughs> "Wow, right?" You know, just wow, because they're all you know, mint Chryslers, you know, monocles and. Did you, did you ever mess around with any of the Chrysler stuff? I mean, they seem uh, like I, I did a little bit with Danny and um, with little Danny and Dougie and big Danny after after Danny and Dougie had retired. Sure. Um, I think Dougie sure. run a couple times when I was working with Danny and stuff, and, but well, you know, Dougie times everything by his ear. You know? <laughs> he timed everything by the ear and started up and he twisted about here and and do the uh, points on this and he'd say fire it up and it would sit there and just purr like right yeah. I, I don't know I, <laughs> <laughs> yeah he was he was amazing kids play video games now they don't tune car by ear that's right. for They're sure they turn, uh, turn engines by ear no yeah. none of that <laughs> yeah there ain't none of that anymore yeah. plug and play the um, just to just to think about that stuff you know we, we've talked at length about the Chrysler's I know nobody wants to get into it but it is weird being up here, when you hear some of the conversations about how fast the Imperials and the Chryslers went in a favor around, you know, the the center of America, and we've talked a ton of times about how the further away you get from the center, the further behind the times you are, the closer to the coasts, the more the more stock, the the less advanced the builds are, and we're in this weird vacuum where the Chryslers stayed prominent for much much longer than than any place else in the country. They they yep. just stayed relevant everybody still wanted to get their hands on them. even when we had that mod show we were talking about ralph orborn that, that, that first year they had the mod show it was mostly mid-60s chryslers you know and then those and most of them had imperial subframes in them. <laughs> yeah. you ever get to mess around with that i run a, a 63 newport one year i well i built it run it probably three shows and then i sent it up here to new york to my brother and he run it a couple times up here, and then finally ended up scrapping it. Yeah, I mean it was it wasn't a, a imperial subbed or nothing, but it could have been. It could have been. <laughs> 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 it was a hard car, but you never got to mess around with those either, did you? My first couple cars were full size Chryslers, and then he went down to Ohio, and I just I was like, I'm so, I'm so far behind on this. That, <laughs> right. And it's only every derby I go to, everything's getting more and more advanced except the compact. So right. I said, I've, I've run probably two or three random compacts, and then I started looking on We Crash and got into the Luminas, and here we are. 
the still relic, chasing them. <laughs> the relic class in Ohio was awesome. Oh, it, that's a blast weeks. to watch. Yeah, yeah, 50s Imperials were out there for that. It was it was like jumping in a time machine. Yeah, I love watching all that old stuff bend, but it's not for me to build. It doesn't <laughs> bend; it just blows apart. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it falls yeah, apart. The old old school stuff just <laughs> blows up. Yeah, he was talking about those mid 60s. Uh, Randy was talking about those mid 60s wagons. It's like I would not want to get involved yeah. in one of those. Exactly. <laughs> it's, exactly. That, there's just nothing there. Yeah. Yeah. Oh uh, well, it was. It, they are good shows. I can't wait to watch this year's at uh, San Filippo. That's, That's why we enjoy, the big shows are just so much more fun to to watch and enjoy. Than it's hard for us to put the stress on to build farm because we we enjoy watching them. So <laughs> right. Much. Well, the atmosphere is different. I mean, you got to go compete in one. I mean, yeah. Mini yeah. Meltdown. Mini Meltdown was a good taste of of what that atmosphere is going to be like. Yeah. It's yeah. it's it's put on by. And this is not. It's going to sound like it, and I don't mean it to be a knock on the fairs. But the fairs are running it as a business to sustain their fair. Yeah, it absolutely. is a necessary. It is a necessary evil in a lot of their minds because of the the historical baggage that comes with having a demolition derby. They're looking at the presumption of a certain type of people. They're looking at a presumption of a certain type of of audience, and and unfortunately, it's a necessary evil that they have to endure, even though they don't want to. And mm-hmm. so many of these fairs would get rid of them. The difference on these big shows that are standalone, they're put on by people who want to be around derbies. They understand what it's like to go through tech inspection. Yes. They understand what it's like to to have to retain your driver base. And that's that that's that huge juxtaposition that we're facing right now is the fairs, you won't skip your hometown fair, even though you might hate it. You won't <laughs> skip your hometown fair. Yep. But the bookends of the season are becoming so saturated now that the, the standalone shows are beginning to cannibalize themselves the same way that the fairs were. Yeah. It's it's a really weird it's a weird atmosphere to be in. But right now, you know, ten years ago they're they're writing the the uh, the eulogy for Demolition Derby and we haven't run out of cars yet. We're still seeing old stuff come out or and and yep. Again, necessity is breeding the innovation. We're finding new cars becoming more and more um, uh, viable. You know, some mm-hmm. of the some of the early '90s GM stuff, the Roadmasters and things like that. That's that they're they're gaining, continuing to gain traction in that those and obviously the Ford game. There's no question there. And those those they, they made an awful lot of those for taxi cabs. You know, oh, yes, <laughs> cops, everything. I mean, even the, the tens, elevens, twelves. You know, they're still still hard cars. You know, they're yeah. O three and newer is O three and newer. It's it's you know all the way to twelve and thirteen. Right. They're still building these cars, so there's, there's a lot of them. A lot of them for a yeah. while to come. They'll be around for a a long, long time. Well, I can't believe it. We managed to fill an hour. You guys got to go get pizza. You've got your fan club <laughs> meeting tonight, right? Fan club meeting. <laughs> is that is that what I understood? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You got to head up the road to to uh, Waterloo. Waterloo to go go get to that. I appreciate you guys hanging with us and and as we we powered through that and and uh, speaking of three power. people working out. What's that? <laughs> speaking of power. Yeah. yeah, yeah, we got there. <laughs> we got there. And uh, I I apologize in the, the early legs of that. I was definitely not. Um, I was not on top of my game getting everything ready on the engineering side of things. We were flashing so hard to get stuff up and going. So we tried to give Nick. Uh, uh, enough time there and, and cover all the topics. And again, we're going to get in a little bit deeper on Ralph Warborn when um, when Brian gets back. And you should also expect a change to Tuesdays. Uh, right now, tentatively penciled it in on Tuesdays for for the rest of the summer um, until Brian gets through with the the summer conditioning stuff with um, uh, with the football team. That is going to do it for us again, guys. Thanks for coming in. It's uh, always good to see you. Open door anytime you want to make the trip up. Um, you know, I imagine the fan club meets monthly. You know? So if you wanted to come and, and hang out here anytime you want, you're, uh, you're more than welcome. But that is going to do it for us here at the North Park Building at Academy Square. We appreciate everybody tuning in for episode number 279. It's in the books. We'll see everybody next time. Crash Course Live is presented by Smash It Demolition Derby, who hosts Bash for Cash, Blizzard Bash, and Capital City Carnage. Online at smashitderby.com. And Stirring Dirt Racing, host of May Mania's team show at the Golden Spike Arena in Ogden, Utah. Online at stirringdirtracing.com. Reckless Abandoned Derby Apparel and Derby Inc. Magazine. This is the Crash Course Demolition Derby Podcast, recorded live at the FigureLakes1.com studios in downtown Seneca Falls, New York.